quiet down so I can go over these videos. So what we have here is a compound inequality. Now remember, guys, remember I told you, I don't care if it's an and or an or, the first thing I want you to do to solve these compound inequalities is I just want you to solve for your variable separately. So solve each one of your inequalities, and I'll talk about the and or in just a second. So I have 6x is greater than a negative 36. Remember, the first thing you want to do is just solve for x. So since my variable is being multiplied by 6, to undo multiplication, I divide by 6. Now, a big mistake is students will flip the sign because they say, oh, the, negative, the 36 is negative. Remember, guys, it's only when you multiply or divide by a negative number. Since I divided by a positive 6, it didn't happen. Please stop that. Then the next one, I have 3x is less than or equal to negative 24. Solve for this, we've got to do division again, right? So divide by 3. So I have x is greater than negative 6, and then or x is less or equal to negative 8. Okay, it's a statement, an or statement. Now remember, guys, what we talked about um, when we were talking about Venn diagrams. Remember, a Venn diagram, when you have A or B, we talked about the or. The or is when you have a union, the union set. And if you guys remember from what we first talked about, the union set is when you have elements in A or you have elements in B. So what that means is you could have any of your elements in A or B or possibly it could be in both. But you can usually see if I have an element A, that's not in my element B, unless it's just in this <laughs> intersection part. So what you're going to want to do is graph each one of these inequalities separately. So let's see, I got negative 10, negative 9, negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4. So I created a nice little number line here. The first thing we want to do whenever we're doing our number lines is to make sure that we're listening and not talking to the person next to us. So we can see that I'm going to go to negative 6 and I'm going to go to negative 8. Now I need to check which, which answers are actually true for their given situation. Remember, whenever it's less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, that means it's a closed circle. It makes your inequality true. Because look at negative 8. Is that less than or equal to negative 8? That's true because negative 8 is equal to negative 8. So I'm going to fill that in. Then, if I tested negative 6, is negative 6 greater than negative 6? Answer is obviously no. So that one's false, so we leave it open. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we can do our test points if you're having trouble with this. But if you also just say it out loud, you can probably help yourself pick the right direction. X, meaning all numbers, are greater than negative 6. So whatever numbers make or make this true is where we're going to shade. So what numbers are greater than uh, negative 6? Well, is that going to go to the right or to the left? Right. Right. Honestly, you know the numbers to the right are greater than. <clears throat> Goes like that. Then here it says x are all numbers that are less than or equal to negative 8. So I look at here and I say, all right, in what direction is the numbers less than negative 8? You can say opposite to the left, the directions are there. So what you guys can see is we've created a, an or statement. It's, our inequality is now true when, it's, when it makes this inequality true or it makes this inequality true. All right? So that's how you graph an inequality with an or. Thank you.